What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents alike? Keep the finger up there for a minute. It's your boy in light, Lucifer and Prince, coming at y'all once again. Unfortunately, YouTube has been shadow banning me for whatever reason. I guess the analytics probably spiked because of channel activity, because of the recent influx of uploads I've been doing lately, but it's fine. I mean, as long as you're here, then guess what? You're near. So, People who get it, they get it, and if you don't, don't. If you want to contact me per this view on this video, please contact me via email in the video description. Serious inquiries only, okay? I do not have time in my personal disposition to waste, and I'm not looking down on anybody. I'm just saying I just want to get to everybody that's serious that are inquiring about services or whatever on time. That way, we don't have no problem. That's just as simple as I can put it. I want to read y'all something, and I want to read y'all this because governments have often, by, they want to call it virtue, but it's really not virtue, but in reality, it's, it's oppressive nature to try to convince you that you need them, and you don't, and let me read this. On sovereigns, we of this mighty Western Republic, you know, the, the, the caucasity of the shit. We of this mighty Western Republic have to grapple with the dangers that spring from popular self-government. Tried on a scale incomparably vaster than ever before in the history of mankind. And from an abounding material prosperity greater also than anything which the world has hitherto seen. As regards the first set of dangers, it behooves us to remember that men can never escape being governed. Either they must govern themselves or they must submit to being governed by others. If from lawlessness or fickleness, from folly or self-indulgence, they refuse to govern themselves, then most assuredly, in the end, they will have to be governed from the outside. They can prevent the need of government from without only by showing they possess the power of government from within. A sovereign cannot make excuses for his failures. A sovereign must accept the responsibility for the exercise of power that inheres in him. And where, as it is true in our republic, the people are sovereign, then the people must show a sober understanding and a sane and steadfast purpose if they are to pre preserve that orderly liberty upon which, as a foundation, every republic must rest. This is from President Theodore Roosevelt. Opening of the Jamestown Exposition, Norfolk, Virginia, April 26, 1907. Sovereignty itself is, of course, not subject to law, for it is the author and source of law. Yik Wo versus Hopkins. That is the court case that I'm citing from that, that actual excerpt. But people... You must understand and interpret a lot of things that I say on my channel is for you to be personally responsible for your own commercial well-being. However, a lot of people have not come to the logistics of actually making a connection with what sovereignty is. Sovereignty is self-government. It means that you take the moral responsibility upon yourself to be your own state in and of itself. A lot of people, they have a, mis a misconception. See, when people say they own their house, they don't realize that you can own a house, but do you own your body? That is a house because it's which your spirit, soul, your noose resides. Do you own your house? You don't own your house. You own a dwelling, but you don't own your house. See, getting outside of the commercialism for a second will help you grasp the higher concepts of what sovereignty really is. Now, if that's too hard for you, then, hey, I know that it's going to take time for you to get that through your head. If you're a numbskull, and it's going to take more time for it to get to your head because you're just basically obstinate to the truth. 
it's fine. But for those who have been in the class, let us go further. The most dramatic aspect is the facility for obtaining non-judicial judgment against any illegal attacker who would insist upon using your private property, your trade name for financial gain, without your authorization. Be it he, she, a judge, prosecutor, IRS, agent, attorney, traffic, cop, government agent, anyone. And I repeat this because I want y'all to understand that these are the entities that will come after your trade name. This no longer needs to be the case. As each such character will face financial ruin in short order should he or she insist on using your copyrighted property without your permission after having been noticed. The non-judicial foreclosure process follows closely thereafter and no one has a monopoly on it. No one whatsoever. Now, we're going to go, we'll go a step further. Okay? Let's talk about it. Here it is. Preamble. For thousands of years, for thousands of years, the legal masters of the world have been steadfastly constructing the system by which world commerce and law now operate. They have developed this system by drawing from and utilizing the timeless principles of human interaction that, over the millennia, has been discovered distilled and codified. These fundamental common sense principles of commercial law expressed in the 10 maxims underlie every other form of law in existence. There is no type of legal issue, controversy, dispute, etc. that is not covered and embraced by at least one of the 10 maxims of law, of commercial law. The creators of the system have achieved preeminence by knowing these foundational principles of human interaction encrypting them into codes by knowing these foundational principles of human interaction and encrypting them for their own self-aggrandizement while keeping the uninitiated ignorant of such knowledge and the means for accessing it. The pinnacle of these efforts is the uniform commercial code. All of the world in commerce now functions under and has thoroughly been entrenched in UCC. However, even though the UCC has been developed and formulated for accommodating mass exploitation and subjugation, it is but a particular codification of the universal underlying laws of commerce. And most importantly, can now be employed for the benefit of the layman now that the code has been substantially cracked. The 10 fund foundational maxims of commerce from which all codes, laws, and statutes are derived and are based upon are, if you have a pen and paper, please stick with me. One, a workman is worthy of his hire. Two, all are equal under the law, both moral and natural law. Number three, in commerce, truth is sovereign. Four, truth is expressed by means of an affidavit. Five, an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in commerce. Six, an unrebutted affidavit becomes a judgment in commerce. Seven, a matter must be expressed before it can be resolved. Eight, he who leaves the field the battle first loses by default. And that's why judges leave the courtroom when you start talking your common sense. Eight, oh, excuse me, nine, sacrifice is the measure of credibility. If one has neither been damaged nor incurred a risk and is unwilling to square an affidavit, an example, true, correct, and complete, the commercial equivalent of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth on his unlimited commercial liability for the veracity of his statements and the legitimacy of his actions, he has no credibility and therefore no basis for asserting claims, charges, or claiming authority. Ten, a lien or claim must be excuse me, a lien or claim can be satisfied only through rebuttal by counter affidavit, point for point, resolution by jury or by payment. Here we go. Fundamentals. Codified laws is precise. It, result, it revolves around how words are defined. The rules of all form of law are set forth in writing, words, syntax, and grammar, etc. The way words are legally defined is the basis of the game. Words used in commercial matters have different meanings than the same words used in everyday parlance. Daily destructive violence is attached with the words and the meanings of said words used in all legal documents and proceedings. In commercial legal matters, simply assuming that you know the meaning of a word can cost you dearly. It is vital that you know how words being used are defined for any hope of knowing what is happening and why. Understand the meaning of words and you can go forward with the confidence and certainty. Remain in the dark about the meanings of key terms, and you can lose the entire game in an instant. You must understand, people, when you practice sovereignty, you practice sovereignty with a, a, a sense of a sense of character 
and a sense of responsibility toward how you deal with your legal affairs. If you do not handle your business, your business will handle you. That's the thing that people do not get. When you realize that you have a legal documentation presented before you and you look at the words and the verbiage that's on that paperwork or that documentation, it does not mean in a literal sense what you think it means. It There are dozens of traps that are looked over, revised by lawyers who actually put these words into these contracts to basically subjugate you into and binding and binding yourself and and, and, and and keeping them out of liability from any so-called liability, which they know will be created from the creation of this documentation. Now, I use this as an analogy. I tell people all the time, this is how you know from my previous video up until now. This is how you know your social or the social, I should say, is worth money. Say, for instance... Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I sprain my ankle, right? And I go to the hospital for treatment. And I can just walk in there, right? Just walk in, emergency, whatever, emergency room, whatever. And I tell them the cause of why I'm here, my name, and then they're going to ask you for your social, right? They're going to ask you for your social because once they actually put that into the system, that's that's an accounting of everything of that is of service that will be required of them. So then, they before they can even give you a cup of water, they make you sign documentation. Little do we know, we do not endorse our signatures with rights reserved. We do not do that, like as a societal whole. Now, I know there's few people who may do it, but I know there's a lot of people who don't. Now, the people who don't are often the people who are stuck with the liability because you may get treatment for whatever cause, but you're also exempting the hospital from liability. So now you're basically like a guinea pig. So if anything goes wrong, and it possibly can, because that's what commerce is all about, things going wrong, then now you're stuck with the responsibility of actually having to pay a bill. Sometimes you can actually pay with your life in certain instances where people go to the health field or the medical field to basically you know, go to them for the remedy. And in reality, even if something were to happen to you from a sprained ankle and some sort of treatment were to, were to fail you, they're going to take the documentation. It's your estate's responsibility to know this stuff because a, a lawyer who knows his or her worth, they're going to take that documentation and present it before a, a competent judge. And they're going to say, well, he signed the paperwork. She signed the paperwork. You didn't reserve your rights. And now that you're gone, if saying the universe forbid you pass away, you did not reserve your rights on the paperwork or documentation. You did not. And that's what a dirty ass lawyer would do. You serious? I'm just telling you, like, this is serious. That's what they would do. And they do that with the specific intent of disfranchising the public. So, people, when you approach sovereignty, you have to approach it with a very mature sense of being and self. You cannot look at it from the immature lens of what they call, quote unquote, the layman. You cannot. It's not going to work for you. It's not. And they're banking on it. They're banking on it for it to not work for you. Serious. Notice why I say banking, you know, you know, serious. That's what they do. And they do it with the specific intent to deceive and mislead you. They do that because they know that you're not competent enough. They know that you're not legally competent enough to grasp the concepts of what their agenda really is. And you just learned a very significant truth in less than 15 minutes. I tell people all the time, dealing with these people, you have to realize you're dealing with a very deceptive media. You're dealing with a very deceptive government. You're dealing with a very deceptive bank practice. You're dealing with a very deceptive health field. You're dealing with all sorts of deception on every level. Every fucking level. Serious. Every level. Now, if you don't want to realize that, then great. Shut this video off and go back to swallowing the blue pill. But if you're down for it, then you'll come to the realization of what things are. You know? And, and that's the truth. Chamoy. This is sponsored by Chamoy. <laughs> I love it.
and it goes good on fruit. Straight. It goes good on fruit. Great on fruit. Now, people might find this weird because, unfortunately, by me talking, my mouth has gotten parched. Oh, yeah, and a little bit of tain. A little bit of tain. I'm telling you, it's perfect. You know, sprinkle that on there. Now, most people might think this is weird. Like, don't knock it till you try it. Trust me. See this? Spicy, a spicy strawberry. I'm telling you. There's nothing like it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. But I'm telling you, people, real talk, you have to come to a realization that these practices are not for the weak minded. They're not. And what whatsoever. They are for the strong minded, the self willed, and the determined. Further inquiries, please contact me via email. You know, my fucking fiance is making all this fucking noise in the background. But, partner. <laughs> Chlorophyll water. People, now is now the time, more than any time in history, to be able to practice self-determination. And, inevitably, with them forcing this agenda on you, you must be able to determine your self-worth within the next few months because 2022, 2023, and 2024 are not going to be very good years. Ask me how I know, contact me via email. I will show you in writing that they put this stuff out there, but because they know that the masses of people are unthinking, they're going to get away with it. Serious. They're going to get away with it. And, and they're going to get away with it because they're going to tell you about it, but you're not going to act upon it. And that's what they're banking on. You're not doing anything about it. Until you do something about it, things will change. If you don't do anything about it, then things won't change. It's your choice. Become active or remain inactive. Do whatever you must do because it's coming quickly. Serious. These people are implementing practices and plans They've been planning for decades. On you. <laughs> now, a lot of people might say it's a conspiracy theory. Call it what you will. But you heard what I said in the opening statement. Men must govern themselves. You must govern yourself by conscience. It's all about what you're being fed. First time viewing this channel, like and subscribe. Make sure you share the content. Share with anybody you know. Share with those who wish to be awakened. But do not share it to the stagnated. First time viewing, like it. If you don't like what I have to say, fine. My videos aren't for you. Shut the video off and go your way. Serious inquiries only when you regard to email. And please, people, leave your damn phone number. <laughs> I hate <laughs> the delay in email. Leave your phone number. If you leave your phone number, I can contact you quickly. Just like that. Can I make it any more simple? Right. Y'all take care. Peace, light, love. Take care.